experienced something that seemed so inconsequential in the moment, but caused ripples throughout your life that you couldn't have fathomed. A moment like that happened to me in 2002. I started a new job that required extensive travel. As a voracious reader, all of this time in airports and on planes gave me time to read. So I was proactively seeking back off, uh, uh, suggestions for new books from different people. A girl that I work with kept pushing this book outlander. She explained it as historical fiction with a little bit of magic, time travel, and the most amazing characters you will ever meet. Mm. Since grade school, I have only been a nonfiction reader. To me, it always feels like fiction is just a variation on a few themes with the same stock characters. So I thanked her, but declined. A few months later, I was traveling from Indianapolis to Denver, Colorado, and finished my latest nonfiction book and realized I didn't have a backup. This meant either reading Sky Mall <laughs> or digging into my briefcase to do some work. Neither sounded all that appealing. But when I reached into my briefcase, what came out was a copy of Outlander. My friend had slipped it into my briefcase without me knowing. What caught my eye first was the size of this thing. 850 pages. Come on. Who can write 850 pages of gripping fiction? I literally scoffed. And then I turned to page one, knowing that somewhere around page five, the boredom would set in. And I could finally tell Carrie, I tried, but this book, just not for me. And then you know what happened? I found myself on the tarmac about a quarter of the way through the book. And then I continued to read all the way to luggage, <laughs> in the shuttle to the hotel, and when I arrived, I locked myself in and skipped dinner, continuing to read this book. <laughs> Unlike any before or since, Outlander for me was a completely immersive experience. Not only did the author, Diana Gabaldon, paint pictures in my head of the characters and the places, but she made me smell the smells, hear the sounds, and taste the food of 1743 Scotland. So when Jane and I began to plan our European vacation last year, I knew I had to get to one place, Scotland, but specifically Inverness. Inverness is located in the Highlands. The Highlands are where the Scottish clans, which many of you may be familiar with, were located. Inverness is the main setting for Outlander. And it is also the setting for a pivotal moment in the Outlander books and in Scottish history called the Battle of Culloden. Like any battle or war, it has a lot of history that leads up to it. And Culloden starts with the Stuarts, who reigned over England, Scotland, and Ireland for more than 100 years until 1688, when James VII lost his throne to William of Orange. Over the next five decades and beyond, the Stuarts would do everything in their power, along with their supporters known as Jacobites, to put themselves back on the throne. And it started with James VII's son, James Francis Edward Stuart. But when he was unsuccessful, in 1744, his son, <coughs> Charles Edward Stuart, also known as Bonnie Prince Charlie to his supporters, decided to take matters into his own hands. He began to secretly amass funds and a whole new Jacobite army as he marched across Scotland and took Carlisle, Falkirk, and Inverness. He became the first Stuart 
to actually be able to see that throne in his future. But unfortunately, in March of 1746, the Royal Navy captured his ship, which was carrying his war chest. And this caused him to make some very fateful and rash decisions that led to Culloden on April 16th of 1746. When this battle was over, nearly all of the clans would be completely wiped out. And for those that remained, the English would remove the clan chieftain authorities and criminalize carrying of weapons, wearing of tartans, and the speaking of the Gaelic for centuries to come. Reading about Culloden was one thing, but stepping onto the battlefield was a surreal experience I really can't explain. It is just an open field of wildflowers with a row of blue flags on one side indicating where the Jacobite army stood and a row of red indicating the English. As the docent walked us around explaining history I already knew, ghosts of the battle seemed to spring up around me. Then came the grave markers. This really made it feel like a solemn grave site. And when the tour was over, Jane and I continued to walk the battlefield where we came across a couple that looked like they stepped straight out of 18th century Scotland and Outlander. But they told us stories I had never heard. Horrors and atrocities that the docent and all of my research had left out. And once again, I felt those clansmen around me. So a lot like the story of the butterfly whose wings cause a hurricane across the ocean, it felt to me like that inconsequential decision of a friend to place a book in my briefcase in 2002 had propelled me through my own standing stones into a battlefield in Scotland. So never again will I scoff at a book recommendation because who knows where it'll take me.